<clears throat> Our first request is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2. We're asking that we would all be found faithful stewards. Moreover, it is required in students that a man be found faithful. Mm -hmm. Stewardship is um, it's not something everybody gets. This is at the discretion of someone else. You can't just say, I think I want to be a steward. I think I want to be steward of this, or I want to be a steward of that. It's something that is, that is delegated to you. It's something that is assigned to you. It's something that is entrusted to you. So it's really an honor. Uh, I remember in one place, uh, the Apostle Paul talked about the Lord counting him worthy. So this stewardship has to do with the work of Christ in the believers, that he has made us to where God can entrust certain things to us. Uh, he, the faithfulness of Christ is what, is what God is basing our stewardship on. Because he, otherwise, he would have no cause to give us a stewardship. A stewardship is, is something that you receive that is it, that you is the personal possession of the one who gave you the stewardship. So in these things, we're acknowledging, one, that we're capable because Christ has made us so, and that we're actually handling the things of God, whatever it is he's placed in us. So to be a faithful steward doesn't just mean that you don't, um, don't through sloth and neglect out and out abuse your stewardship. If you're going to be a faithful steward, you're going to be proactive, as it were, to develop and to use and to exercise that stewardship according to the will and purpose of the one who gave it to you. So it, it, God has given us the wherewithal to be profitable servants in doing this. So we want to ask him this night that all of us, all of the saints, would be found faithful stewards in the things of God. So who will lead us in that request? Brother Jeremy, Brother Ricky, Sister Barb, Sister Laura, Sister Sydney. All right. Anytime we have, uh, I mean, it's good that we have hands at any time. I appreciate the brethren who... who um, Accept, if you will, the the lifting up of, of these requests to the Lord. But whenever we have such a large number so readily uh, wanting to pray for something, you can tell that this is something that, that the Lord himself is it's dear to him, and he wants it prayed for. Amen. All right, next we're going to Philippians. This time we'll be in chapter 3 and verse 8. Again, our prayer now is that all professed believers would be found in him not having their own righteousness and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Yeah. Amen. We've, we've spoken much in a not too distant past and still mention it from time to time about the righteousness of God. Uh, this, this is not an easy concept. I remember we plowed this field a long time and we were still pulling out the, the weeds of tradition and ignorance for a long time. Even when we could speak the right words, we, we still had to make sure those things were rooted out of our reasoning, out of our hearts, out of our confidence. These things, th this, is not, th this is not something that, that man can, can really understand without God working in him. Mm -hmm. The righteousness of God not a righteousness of some sort, the righteousness of God, one that's accepted of God. It's the only one. 
See, it's very exclusive. You either have this righteousness or you have no righteousness at all. What you have is filthy rags, which you call righteousness. And in that day, that's what they'll be. They'll be filthy rags, and you yourself will despise them. So they can't be trusted in. Our, our prayer now is that all professed believers would be found in him not having their own righteousness. This is a more excellent righteousness. This is a consistent righteousness. This is a righteousness which, uh, while there are some who may not understand it, they will recognize it because it's accompanied with holiness and it's accompanied with zeal and it is the product of faith. Everyone who has this righteousness is ready to give God glory for whatever expression of righteousness it is. And it's not just a, it isn't just a lip service type thing. They know that this is the work of God and they're grateful for it. It produces a great humility and a great gratitude to God and it's very productive. This righteousness accomplishes the purpose of God beginning now and up up through the end of the, past the judgment, world without end. This is a righteousness that endures even as it is of him that is everlasting. Mm -hmm. So who will lead us in that request? That all professed believers, boy, what a liberty. Remember the liberty we found when we began to, or w w wherever you were. Yeah. But together, I think we made uh, better, more complete steps mm -hmm. as we came at it from different ways. It took a while. This wasn't a one-sermon lesson. We didn't hear somebody speak on it and go, okay, got that. Now let's, let's get on to something else. We, we had to turn this over a time or two. So, and it'll still get taken away from us if we, don't, if we don't hold on to it and cherish it. So we're praying that all professed believers would be found in him not having a righteousness of their own. Sister Laura, Brother Tony. All right. Finally, brethren, 1 Peter 1 and verse 7, that our faith would be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. There's going to be great glory and great honor. First, God and Christ will be praised and honored and glorified. And God is going to praise those that served him and honor those who loved him and glorify those that are his. So there's going to, because we, we are not just separate from him. This, he's drawn us into the work. And in doing that and recognizing the saints, then this is going to redound to the glory of God yet again. Because it'll be shown that all things are of God. And what a, what a wonderful thing. If God made something that he can praise, then how much greater is that God who made it? It's, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful thought. Um, if, we were to, if we were to try to be in the presence of such things, I, I don't think that these present bodies could just handle the judgment. I really don't. Because the joys will be too great, and the sorrows will be too deep, and it's just everything about it would be too intense for us now. So we have to die to get there. Mm -hmm. We're beginning that even now. But there comes a day when the culmination comes, and we will be glad. And we will be found unto praise and honor and glory at his appearance. We will be. Now, we're praying for that. That doesn't mean if we don't pray for it that God's not going to do it. But we fellowship with him in this, in the anticipation of this. Mm -hmm. We declare our heart that, that it's, it's beating with his in anticipation of this. Jesus is, is sharing in our anticipation. The Father is continuing 
in bringing this purpose to fruition. But everything is headed to this end. How can we, knowing that this is going to happen, not anticipate it, not think on it, not desire it? Not Asking for these things doesn't mean that... Um, that we that, that there's any thought in our head that that this will not come to pass, but we do want to tell the Lord in our prayers just how much we are eager for His praise and glory and honor, and how eager and how expectant we are to hear His words to us as we have as He's answered these first requests that we've been found faithful stewards and that we have the righteousness of God, now we can really anticipate this time of His praise and honor and glory. Our faith will be found under that. We will be found under that. So who will lead us in that request? Sister Laura, Brother Aaron, Sister Julie, Brother Robert. All right. Thank you very much, brethren. And... Um, Brother Tony has our message tonight, and Brother Antonio is going to read his sermon text. And Brother Levi, would you, at the end of our prayers, remember Brother Tony before he comes up? Thank you, Brother.